This is Tom Bell. I'm a reporter at the Maine Sunday Telegram. Last week I traveled to Brownville Junction, which is located smack in the middle of Maine. And the reason it's called a junction is it's here where three legs of the Montreal, Maine, and Atlantic Railway meet, along with a railway owned by Irving that goes to St. John, New Brunswick. It's a railroad town, been this way for more than 100 years, and the people here depend upon the railroad uh, to make a living. And the reason I, I went here was because of the accident in Lac Megantic last month it was a disaster there, but it's also having a ripple effect here in Brownville Junction and the greater area, which includes Milo. In total, there have been 67 railroad workers in Maine laid off, and 47 live in the Milo Brownville area. When I was in Brownville, I had the opportunity to see a work crew of the railroad working to fix uh, some rails after a train had derailed. I took some photographs uh, of them, and once the, the workers uh, saw me with the camera, they, they moved away. I had a hard time getting anyone from the railroad to talk to me, and even the people who were laid off uh, didn't want to talk. They'd been told by the railroad uh, not to talk to the press. In normal times, the area is a noisy place as rail workers shift trains around the yard and you hear the sounds of clanging metal and the rumble of the diesel engines. It's, it's all, this noise is almost a constant uh, presence. With the railroad line to Quebec now cut in two because of uh, what happened in Lac Megantic, there's an unwelcome silence here. Maybe in southern Maine people like the idea of, uh, of silence, but here in, in this town, it's, it's, it's scary because they know that the railroad is silent. That means uh, people are out of work. I found the people uh, in town uh, friendly and, and eager to talk. Uh, Richard Monaghan, he showed me the old station for the Canadian Pacific Railway. It's been empty for many years. Steve Johnson, the owner of the general store and more, he said business is down 8 to 20 percent because of the, the layoffs. Dan Preble, he's a wood buyer. I saw him working down near the tracks. He said everything now is going by trucks. There's very little going by train anymore. And outside the general store, I met Maynard Emery. He was an older man. He said growing up, he, like just about everybody of his age, uh, worked uh, shoveling snow uh, in the yard. One of the interesting characters was Mike Anderson, a cab driver. He said he knew uh, most of the people who got laid off, and you know, he said things are real tough for them. Glenna Dean lives in an old house near the tracks that used to be a boarding house for the rail workers. She said a lot of people are saddened by what happened in Canada, but she also said there's been a domino effect and people now in this town are hurting. Her husband is a pastor of the local church. He grew up in the town and he was very eloquent talking about how the town really has been over many years been in this period of decline and this is uh, a big hit. He said, uh, when it's quiet, nobody's working. This town is hurting now. The railroad is the only thing we have here.